When the Great War began in 1914, thousands of young Americans volunteered to serve as ambulance drivers, providing first aid to Allied soldiers on the front lines. Among their ranks were John Dos Passos and Ernest Hemingway, two authors for whom the war would become one of their great literary themes. The ambulance drivers, Hemingway, Dos Passos, and a friendship made and lost in war, tells the story of their close relationship and collaboration developed through the peace of the 1920s and 30s in Paris, Pamplona, and Key West. Dos Passos penned the greatest anti-war novel of his generation as Hemingway's novel soared to financial success. 21-year-old John Dos Passos was the first of the two men to see the Great War. He was among the drivers who worked in the summer of 1917 on the front in Verdun, a stretch of land less than four square miles in size, where hundreds of thousands of French soldiers and German soldiers had died, and a greater number were wounded, fighting over a few thousand yards of blood-soaked soil. In each trip back from the fighting, Dos Passos steered an ambulance loaded down with more wounded soldiers than it was meant to carry. Sometimes those soldiers with the more manageable injuries stood on the running boards or squeezed in on the front seat between Dos Passos and his assistant. At every lurch, said Dos Passos, the wounded groaned horribly. The gruesomeness of what Dos Passos saw left him wordless. I'm dying to write, but all my methods of doing things in the past merely disgust me now. All former methods are damned inadequate, he wrote in his diary. Horror is so piled on horror that there can be no more. When his ambulance corps was disbanded, he joined the Red Cross and was sent to Italy, where he met a 19-year-old ambulance driver named Ernest Hemingway. Like Dos Passos, Hemingway was certain that to miss the war was to be absent from the defining moment of his generation. Believe me, he wrote to his sister before leaving for Europe, I will not go because of any love of gold braid glory, but because I couldn't face anybody after the war and not have been in it. A month after meeting Dos Passos, Hemingway was wounded by a mortar. Convalescing, he fell in love with nurse Agnes van Karowski, the inspiration for his later fictional Catherine Barclay, and with the close of the war, he returned to the United States a hero. Six years later, the two writers were reunited in Paris and became fast friends and collaborators. Their experience as ambulance drivers deeply affected them and would alter American literature. In the post-war years, the books they wrote, such as Hemingway's A Farewell to Arms and Dos Passos' Three Soldiers, as well as his USA Trilogy, were innovative and important works, read by a nation coming to terms with the Great War. Many of those who would fight in the Second World War experienced the first cataclysmic war of the 20th century through the pages of these books. To Hemingway and Dos Passos, the war had made traditional writing styles inadequate. Their generation needed its own voice, not one that imitated another from the past. Hemingway sought to describe the desolate post-war world with honest clarity, working like a jeweler in his quest to pen the, quote, truest sentence that you know. He believed that the perfect representation of an imperfect world alone was sufficient. In contrast, Dos Passos wanted his writing to change the world. The war was no longer solely a cataclysmic horror that swept across Europe and maimed and killed 38 million people. Rather, its unparalleled militarization was a harbinger of how society was robbing people of their individuality. If the record of war in the 20th century is an indicator, Dos Passos' impassioned warning against it fell on deaf ears.